Due to his complete lack of talking, his mother took him to be seen in the psychiatry ward of the General Hospital. And there, he was diagnosed with PTSD. Oh, gosh, okay, he's actually been through some stuff then, okay. I'm gonna click it. I'm just gonna see what happens, you know? Again, for science, because I have a feeling if I click the green one, I see the girls in the back, it's not gonna turn out well, I just know, I just know. I already know. He's gonna be like, to get through it, I had to envision everyone in their underwear, which wasn't hard because the nurses were smoking hot. That's what he's gonna say. I guarantee it. Living together with Saraton. I'd have her wake me up every morning wearing nothing but an apron, complete with a wake up kiss. I bet that's what the delusion would have been, dude. I freaking dodged that bullet, baby. That time I think I did it. How's it going, everybody? Hoodlumut here, back with some more Chaos Head Noah. And, uh, last time... Huh... Our relationship died. It died when Yua became cool. <laughs> kinda, I, she, I, she's, she seems kinda cool. She also seems a little obsessed with, with, with this case for some reason. My personal opinion, because someone she cared about died because of it, but, um... Yeah, we, uh... Everything was going great. Takumi was like, oh, I can finally be a normal person again. And then he had to look at her bag and it dumped over and I, I didn't click either positive or negative. I just wanted him to forget about it. But nope, that didn't happen. Instead, it tumbled over and we saw inside of Yua's bag was new gen stuff. So uh, that uh, that kind of ruined everything for Takumi. And he's like, oh, everyone's a liar. I, I, I knew it. I knew it. And then... But then Yua found stuff. She's she's actually she found stuff in our room. She's been investigating us for a while. So she wasn't just a psycho killer, at least that we know of right now. She is an investigator, um, which is kind of interesting. And um, the biggest thing that was revealed to us was apparently we and uh, Shogun are the same person. Nidhart and Shogun apparently are the same person, somehow. And uh, Yua asked us about precognitive powers. Um, so that was just a big dump of information on my brain that I wasn't uh, quite sure how to process at the time. I'm mostly just upset that Takumi's going to go back to being a degenerate, because he's going to think everyone uh, is the same. And he almost got out. He had a chance, and it was stolen from him. So, uh... Aside from that, we are now here, right after we were accused of also being Shogun. So, uh, let's just get back into this, shall we? I don't want to see anything. I don't want to hear anything. Time is not a constant. Well, that's what Steinsgate taught us, so I mean, you know. Uh, well, actually, told us that everything is constant. Until you mess with... Whatever, don't, don't listen to me. There are contradictions in my memories. There are errors in my point of view. The Earth isn't spinning. This is just another game. I stuffed my mouth with some fish sausage as I turned on my PC. I'm not me. Before long, my monitor shone brightly with my Sataton wallpaper. This world. I went straight to ESO and opened it up without an ounce of hesitation. Isn't the one I belong to. Hmm. Oh, I was just before the chapter. Ha! <laughs> okay. Vroom, vroom! Quick, get on if you're going on the field trip. All aboard! Lying face down on the floor, Nishijo Takumi held a colored pencil in his hand. The one he was currently using was yellow, having switched from a red one only a few minutes ago. He joyously ran his pencil across the spread-out sketchbook, which he was nearly lying on top of. Takumi loved drawing pictures. 
He would always doodle on the edges of his notes during every lesson at school. Huh? The morning news had been left running in the background, but since news and the like was boring to a fourth grader like Takumi, he did not pay it any mind. Vroom, vroom! Candy, get your candy here! Only 300 yen! He was drawing a yellow bus and pretending he was the driver. All ashore that's going to shore! We're heading out! Vroom! As he imagined the scene in his head, he made it actually happen in the picture. Times where he would get too excited and accidentally draw on the tatami beneath him were not exactly infrequent. Nanami, who would always read manga beside him, would scold him each time he did it. She had some nerve considering she was the little sister, usually saying things along the lines of, Oh, come on, don't get the floor all dirty. Even so, Takumi never became any less immersed in his art. Aww. However, when he got to the point of drawing the people in the window, his hand suddenly stopped. <laughs> then, he ripped up the sketchbook and threw it away. On the previous day, on the day where the autumn field trip had only been one more day away, Takumi had suddenly been told by his parents that he couldn't go. Even though it had been something he had been looking forward to for a very long time. Ah, uh, did he want to make friends when he was younger and then was forced to not do stuff and then became an outcast because of it? Is that what happened? That's freaking rough if that's the case, dude. No. Ah. Uh. So much so that he had been in a constant state of excitement for the entire day. Wanting the next to arrive as soon as possible. That cruel declaration from his parents was something Takumi absolutely could not accept. He kicked and screamed, saying he would definitely go no matter what. But it was no use. His parents would not listen no matter what he said, choosing only to repeat the same words again and again. You just can't. We're doing this for you, Takumi. I wonder why. Do you think it's because was there new gen stuff when he was growing up? Maybe? Like that type of a thing even? Even if it's not like actually new gen. Maybe they were just trying to protect him. I don't know. His parents don't seem bad. His dad's letting him live in a container, you know, like by himself. I mean, well, okay, that sounded bad. <laughs> I mean, like in other words, Takumi treats him like crap and they're not just like, fine, get the heck out of here then or whatever. You know, they're still trying to like, you know, let him kind of figure himself out and do stuff on his own, you know, kind of type deal. So I don't know. It's kind of interesting. Takumi sank into his bed and trembled with so much frustration he was very close to ripping his futon to shreds. He resented his parents from the bottom of his heart. For Takumi, that field trip had been a big, big event that could not have come soon enough. Everyone else in his class could go, but he alone was not allowed to. From his perspective, that was beyond unreasonable. Takumi was in a lonely world. Everyone else was in a super fun world. To him, it felt like he alone had been completely cut off from it. He could not forgive the teacher, his classmates, anyone. They had all left him behind. And he especially could not forgive his parents for their sudden unfair decision. Those feelings transformed into pure hatred towards his parents and toward all of his classmates. Takumi bit his lip hard enough to draw blood. He muttered curses at them over and over. Is that really what did it? This is like this was like his catalyst for becoming a shut-in and all that? <laughs> I don't think anyone should be allowed to go. 
The following morning arrived. The phone had been ringing over and over again since dawn. Each time his mother would pick up the phone, she seemed to be very shaken while talking. Takumi could not get even a wink of sleep. The clock passed 9 a.m. In her usual well-behaved manner, Nanami was sitting on a floor cushion, reading manga. She had told Takumi the day before, I'm going to take a break from school to keep you company, okay? As if she thought it was the obvious thing for her to do. Their father had already gone to work, so he was not around. Their mother was very busy with the phone calls and had yet to prepare breakfast. See, I feel like something bigger's going on, you know? It's like there's something, there's something they were trying to protect him from for whatever reason. There was no need for him to go to school that day. Sullen as he was, Takumi opened his sketchbook and began drawing to distract himself. His feelings of rage refused to subside, so he tore up the sketchbook in frustration. As he did that, however... Huh? Hey! That bus! Nanami sounded puzzled. Takami had thought she was talking about his picture, but her gaze was actually aimed at the TV. Hey, Mommy? Nanami called out loudly to her mother, who was still busy with the phone calls. Now listening, Takami followed his sister's gaze and stared vacantly at the TV screen. The screen displayed a scene of a collapsed elevated highway. A section that was only about 50 meters long had fallen. Regrettably, a bus driving along there at the time had been caught up in the collapse, toppling onto its side beneath the overpass. That was the bus he- Yup, that was the bus he was gonna be on. Do his parents have precognitive powers? Do they know? Oh, dude, what? It was the very same bus that Takumi should have been on. The bus his classmates were riding on. From just a single glance, Takumi could imagine exactly what had happened. His classmates were on the screen. One child was sobbing, another had blood all across their forehead, and another was lying atop a stretcher being carried into an ambulance. The reporter was announcing the state of the accident with a grave look on their face, but Takumi did not really understand what they were talking about. Taku-chan, it's awful. His mother was standing at the entrance to the room, holding a cordless phone. Her face was pale. The bus for the field trip was in an accident on the highway. It's on TV right now. And Mr. Saito... died. For some reason... Takumi was already sure of this. Everything happening on the TV was eerily similar to what he had pictured in his head the night before, when he had been overwhelmed by frustration and hatred. He does have precognitive powers, that's gotta be it. He didn't cause it to happen though, did he? Because he said that, that no one should be able to go? He didn't like make that happen, did he? He just knew it was gonna happen, right? He just predicted it? Is that what happened? And, and did his parents also predict it then? I, this is... okay. There was only one feeling that occupied the depths of his mind. A peculiar conviction. One where he was sure that he had precognitive abilities. Oh. Okay. Long ago, a show on TV that examined people who claimed to have ESP had been etched into Takumi's mind. A person with precognitive abilities had appeared on the show, shocking the world by demonstrating frightening ESP in the experiment. The experiment verified whether or not the psychic could guess which of 12 items were placed in which numbered box. They did this by placing the subject in a different room, then proceeding to have them predict which cards with the item name on them belonged to which box. Afterward, Staff members in the other room would place the actual items into boxes, then verify how many the psychic foretold. The person on the show received an incredible 90% correct, causing an uproar among the entertainers. 
As this happened, Takumi tested if he could predict things the same way the psychic on TV did, only to get every single one correct. Of course, he did not tell anyone else about this. Interesting. So as he gazed up at the TV, he believed that the accident was yet another instance of his precognitive predictions being exactly right. It sounds like over half the class is injured. Oh, how awful! His mother tried hugging him as he laid down, but Takumi avoided her grasp and crawled to the corner of the room. But... I'm so relieved. Her eyes swam about as she whispered in a hollow voice. I'm so, so relieved that I made you stay home, Taku-chan. Takumi felt sick. They were useless, he thought to himself. His abilities had not made a single difference. Just thinking about it made his heart turn to ice in an instant. Wait, it didn't make a single difference? You can't really make a difference by predicting the future unless you said something, right? After that, Takumi stopped speaking to others for a while. He quite literally went mute. He did not say a single word to another soul. His parents worried about him and their already overprotective habits escalated even further. Finding them to be acting more and more ridiculous, Takumi thus decided to play the role of a mute boy. He thought of it as revenge against them. Really? Even though you know that like everything crashed and people got hurt and died and all that? Really? I don't get it. Due to his complete lack of talking, his mother took him to be seen in the psychiatry ward of the General Hospital. And there, he was diagnosed with PTSD. Oh, gosh, okay, he's actually been through some stuff then, okay. Since Takumi did not actually have PTSD or anything of the sort, he never once took his medicine. He merely pretended to. His parents didn't even realize he was acting. And in the end... He didn't feel even a hint of pity as they worried themselves sick over him. Really? Huh. That's so weird. Why did he just go completely... Is this like a different Takami? I'm trying to figure this out. I don't... I don't get why he would just shut down over that, you know, and be like... I don't know. I don't get it. I could maybe understand if he felt like he caused it, but I don't see how he could have thought that, right? He just knew it was going to happen and didn't say anything, so I guess there's that, but I don't feel like that's what he's struggling with. He, he's, he's struggling with something else. Everything felt like a lie. The world was filled with falsities. It was overflowing with malice. It was out to get me. Please log into the chat room you always use and take a look. Then you'll understand that what I'm saying is true. And everything I said it was all genuine. I hope you can at least believe me about that. Wait, that you like anime? That you wanted to be like, like talk to us more and all of that? Like, uh, I don't know. Wait a minute. If that's all the case, that's kind of cool that she's actually still the same person. Which again, I even was thinking about that. I'm like, you can't really fake that, can you? She would have had to have done extra research about the things Takumi enjoyed in order to get close to him, you know what I mean? On top of doing new gen work, it just, that's like, that's kind of far-fetched, you know what I mean? So, I would buy more that she actually maybe liked the show before she started getting into these cases or something, maybe. But, I don't know. Maybe she still is, even while doing the, the cases, I don't know. Okay, 
Interesting. But of course, Takumi's not going to believe this. He's just going to be like, everyone's a liar. It doesn't matter. Uh," And he's just going to like freak out and be a a degenerate more. After bombarding me with her nonsensical theories, Yua had said that one last thing before she'd left. There was no way I could believe her. How the heck was I supposed to believe someone that'd been lying to me this entire time? I refused to believe that everything there was me like Yua had said. Everything she'd said about me being Shogun was a total joke. I wanted to believe that. But when I checked the timestamp in the chat log, there was no mistaking that the conversation wasn't matching up. Have I been... sleepwalking? Problem was... During the time Shogun appeared to be posting in chat, I hadn't been sleeping at all. Exactly, like he would have had to have had literal memory lapses to think that he just got that message sent to him, you know what I mean? And it seems like, well, but they were all sent from, they were all sent from uh, from the day ahead, right? So, I don't know, that doesn't make any sense, I don't understand. If I recalled correctly, I had indeed been at at cafe at that time, but I hadn't slept, so I couldn't have been sleepwalking. In that case, I wondered why I didn't have any memories of posting as Shogun. Maybe my body had been being controlled by someone else, which would mean... No, that's ridiculous. I felt that the best way to calm myself down was to escape from reality into the fictional world of ESO. In ESO, everything was fake. A lie. At the end of the day, its world was just part of a video game. Kind of funny that he gets so mad about real life being fake and a lie and everybody's a liar and all this stuff, but then he retreats into something that he himself admits is entirely and completely fake and a lie, right? It's kind of... It's kind of poetic, you know, (laughs) it's like, it's like, even though I know this is fake and a lie or whatever, it won't let me down the same way that real life does. You know, it's like interesting. But in base lard, I could become the godlike existence known as Nidhart. A fabrication like that, a lie like that was something I'd readily accept. I wanted to stay there. Nobody would mind if I did, would they? Or maybe... The world of ESO was actually the real world, and my own reality was the fake one. Just a game. In that case, Nishijo Takumi would be a fictional character, and Nidhart would be my true form. Oh, don't get into that mindset, dude. That's gonna send you down a bad path, bro. Hey, Nidhart? I called out to the paladin standing inside the monitor. Was I controlling you? Or were you controlling me? Which was it? Could you be real? And I a mere avatar? What if the world I was in was just a game in and of itself? If that were true, that would solve every mystery I was struggling with. Well, I mean, I mean, you know, not to break the fourth wall or anything. (laughs) Wow, that's, uh, yeah, it seems kind of meta. That's kind of funny. What if, just like how I was staring at Nidhart within my monitor, what if someone was staring at me in the exact same way? (laughs) That's kind of... Yeah, that's pretty existential, my guy. What the heck? Oh, dang. I kind of like that. Whose eyes are those eyes? That would make them the player controlling me. I mean, I'm kind of controlling you. I mean, I'm a, I'm kind of making decisions when those, you know, the green and red buttons come up. But for the most part, I'm just kind of reading. I'm just letting you be you. But trust me, I'm not making you do the lewd crap that you've been doing, okay? That's all you. That's on you, my guy, all right? I'm trying to help you. I tried to help you, 
And then I apparently ruined it. So, you know, I'm sorry. All right. We all make mistakes. All right. But for the most part, you're your own person. All right. I mean, I'm just kind of reading your life here. So don't blame me. Okay. Got to take responsibility for your own actions. If I did have someone controlling me, would it kill them to do less of a crap job? Hey, <laughs> like I said, not my fault. <laughs> Though, I guess an avatar couldn't really complain. Yeah. It would also explain how Shogun and I could be the same person, validating that theory. Come to think of it, it was kind of like what Lisa Lot was. Nidhart and Lisa Lot couldn't possibly exist in Baselard at the same time. I was the only one playing as them, after all. Maybe Shogun and Nishijo Takumi were similar and couldn't exist in the same world at the same time. I'm telling you, dude, this is like we're getting into, into world line theories again. This is kind of wild, okay. It was also possible that it was a bug. Speaking of bugs, encountering that bizarre girl in a murder case as well as a whole bunch of other stuff that happened, could have been bugs too. Uh the image Shogun had sent me flashed through my mind. I gripped my head with my hands and frantically shook it away. I wanted to run away from everything. If, maybe, just maybe, there was a player controlling me, Please, reset me already. Aw. Just remake my character and start from scratch. Please. That's not how it works, my guy. Oh, shoot. Okay, we back in time or we... What the heck? The waiting room of the university hospital was filled to the brim with middle-aged people waiting to be examined. The view hadn't changed from a few years prior. It almost made me feel as if time itself had stopped there. Oh, he's still going, okay. Moreover, everyone there looked miserable, and the smell of disinfectant pervaded the stagnant air. It was the kind of place that sucked all the life out of you and made you wish for the sweet embrace of death in five minutes tops. Yeah, I can imagine. I didn't like hospitals. Me neither, bro. But that's a whole different topic I'm not about ready to get into. I, uh, yes, I agree. I agree. Same whole, whole reason that I wasn't cool with Okabe taking meds, dude. So, but that's a that's a different topic for a different time. <laughs> The way the lobbies had countless people, yet the corridors beyond felt completely devoid of them had always freaked me out ever since I was a little kid. It almost felt like the corridors themselves absorbed and stewed in the stench of death. I always felt like that was what a hospital truly represented beyond its outer facade. I even thought that some horrifying creature was lying in wait deep within the corridors. That was why I really didn't want to go there. Okay, well, that's not why I wanted to go there, but I mean, again, a different story for a different time. <laughs> but there was something I had to make sure of no matter what, so I found myself reluctantly waiting my turn in line for an examination. What, to find out if you have precognitive powers? Is that what you're trying to figure out? Even when I tried to fully immerse myself in ESO, the bombshell that Yua had dropped on me continued to swirl around and around inside my head, and I hadn't been able to concentrate for even a second. As a result, my mind had been torturing me with all the various possibilities all the way until morning, and I'd become genuinely scared that something was wrong with me. That was why I went to the hospital, to get an official stamp of approval from a medical professional that said, Nishijo Takumi is completely normal. That is not the way to go about it, dude. <laughs> Just because they wear a white lab coat does not mean they know everything. <laughs> if you have to have someone else tell you that you're normal, that's, that's not the way to do it, bro. I'm just saying, but you know, whatever. 
I wanted to prove that it wasn't me who was abnormal, but you were. I was used to coming to the hospital's psych ward, and yet, when the grill at the reception desk... Oh, the grill? <laughs> Wait, is... Is that... <laughs> Is that grill? Is that is that actually like the meme grill, or 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 was it? Is it actually supposed to be girl? I I don't actually know. I'm gonna read it as grill. Okay. And yet, when the grill at the reception asked, "Is this your first time?" I nodded without thinking. Ever since that bus accident, my mother had regularly taken me here for checkups. During middle school. My physician said that I'd completely recovered, and I stopped going after that. This was my first time coming back in about four and a half years. Oh, okay, so so he hasn't been going continuously. Okay. Oh, 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 whoa, whoa, okay. My first physician had been some senile professor who was supposed to have some authority in the field but I'd only seen him a few times, and after that, someone else had taken over. A student of his or something. Okay, so we got the green and red button. I kind of want to see what the red button does, and I feel like this would be a good time to test it. I want to see what he says a little bit more first. Although, despite calling himself the other guy's student, he hadn't been particularly young. To be honest, he looked pretty old. The night before... I was reminded of something that Dr. Takashina had said. I'm gonna click it. I'm gonna click it. I'm gonna click it. I'm gonna see what happens. I'm gonna click it. I'm just gonna see what happens. You know? Again, for science. Because I, I have a feeling if I click the green one, I see the girls in the back, it's not gonna turn out well. I just know. I just know. I already know. He's gonna be like, to get through it, I had to envision everyone in their underwear, which wasn't hard because the nurses were smoking hot. That's what he's gonna say. I guarantee it. I guarantee it. So I'm going with red. I want to see what red does. This is the perfect time, I think. This hospital isn't just for physical injuries, but also for mental ones. I hated hospitals. But that doctor had been very nice. He'd left a good impression on me, and I thought he was a good person. Well, even then, I'd still thoroughly fooled all the adults to the very end. That is, except Dr. Takashina. He'd seen through it all. And he was the one that declared me completely recovered. So, like, again, why was he trying to do this to himself? You know what I mean? Like, why was he doing this? I don't understand. I mean, I feel like I've heard of kids doing this, but they usually do it to get attention. But this doesn't feel like an attention-seeking thing, right? This is, like, this is different. This isn't just, ooh, look at me, I'm different. This is, like, he shut down for, like, no reason. I don't understand. Is the reason simply because of the bus accident? Like, he didn't seem traumatized by it. So, again, I just, I don't get it. I, I don't understand why he was doing this. As, is it just a game to him? He was just having fun with it? I, I don't know. If I can get him to examine me. I wondered what he'd say if he learned that I'd become an otaku freak. Nah, there was no way he'd remember me after all this time. Oh no, I bet he does. Alright, here we go. Negative delusion. <laughs> it didn't take long for me to be called into the examination room. I'd expected to be waiting there for quite a while, but I guess I was wrong. Why had there been so many people in the lobby then? Maybe they were being paid to sit there just to make it look busy. Okay, we are in a delusion because everything's wobbly, so I don't know. It was a different examination room than the one from four years ago. But when I stepped inside, I was welcomed with a face I remembered dearly. Also, for any newcomers here, uh, this is how I've been doing, uh, like, this is how I did Steins Gate, right? So, any, any visual novel I've ever done, uh, I, I go through it once myself, and, uh, then, uh, then I go back and I use a guide to see how to get the other endings, but I always like to go blindly in one time first to just see how, like, what ending I get from the first time, so, 
that's what I'm doing. So I, I, I'm going in. This is complete blind. I have no idea what any of this is going to do. Uh, so far, I've been mostly happy with the choices I picked. Um, but uh, there's like one or two in there that I could have done without. <laughs> so anyway, just for any of you that are new, that's that's how I've been treating this. So anyway. Hey there, Nishijo-kun. Dr. Takashina looked at me with a beaming smile. He hadn't changed a bit after four years. Feeling relieved, everything I was thinking spilled out all at once. D -d -d doctor help me. W what's wrong? A strange g girl is stalking me. If I don't get help soon, I w won't be able to go to s school, and I, I won't be able to go home either. I, I can't r relax anywhere she might find me. Please calm down, Nishijokun. I, I can't just calm down. There's something wrong with that girl. I I'm perfectly normal. And not just you, uh, that, that, that demon girl. Okay, well, so what's interesting is his, his, um, his, his, his delusions are coming out of him seemingly in the real world now, right? When I click the red button, it's like he's, he's talking about things that may or may not have happened like two people in the real world. That's kind of what it feels like, at least in this particular scenario. So I don't know if he'll do that every time or not, but anyway. Yeah, that demon girl. The, that demon girl is the true culprit. The true culprit? The, the new gen culprit. The, there's no doubt about it. I, I, w I was at the scene of the crime right when the corpse was being c crucified and I saw that girl. Everything's going to be all right. You needn't worry. But for now, let's take a deep breath and relax. How does that sound? <laughs> Having been admonished by him, I stopped talking. I didn't understand how he knew everything would be alright, but... He was a professional. Not to mention Dr. Takashina. So, I guess he must be right. That was what I told myself. My breathing was ragged, likely thanks to getting so worked up. I took a deep breath. Dr. Takashina stared fixedly at me. What concerned me, however, was that the look on his face was pretty serious. Uh, um, is everything really gonna be alright? Of course. Even though such a d dangerous girl is c coming after me? How can you st say that for sure? Would you like to know why? When I nodded, he lightly shrugged his shoulders. He spun the pen in his hand around his fingers, likely out of habit. Well, it's quite simple. After all, that girl does not exist in this world. Oh man, yeah, he definitely thinks we're in a delusion. Maybe we actually are in an actual delusion, I don't know. I, I believe it actually happened, but it's like coming in the form of a delusion, so we're like, did it happen, did it not happen, you know? It's kind of like that Signsgate thing of being like, if I just like erase everything, then it never happened, right? It's like if I just rearrange the world line, then the things in the past never happened. It's kind of like playing off of that, or technically Steinsgate was playing off of this, but you know what I mean. What? B but You are merely terrified of your own delusion. His tone of voice was so gentle. It was eerie. I started trembling all over. I, I couldn't stop it. Why was this happening? Even though Dr. Takashino was being so nice, he... Nishijokun. You have never seen that girl in reality. Do you understand? 
No, I don't. Well, how about I put it more clearly? There is no conceivable way that you could have seen that girl. Because... For the past seven years, you've never taken a single step out of this hospital. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> what? The frick? Huh? Huh? What? What the heck was he? You've been hospitalized in the psychiatry ward here for seven years. You are aware of this. Yes. Aware of... What the heck was he talking about? How could he casually spout off such insane bullcrap with a smile on his face? I inadvertently glanced down at the clothes I was wearing. When I'd come to the hospital, I was wearing a denim long-sleeved shirt on top of a blood-tuned t-shirt, along with the only pair of jeans I had. That was the outfit I should have been wearing. But for some reason, I was now wearing a hospital gown. A one-piece, colored a pale yellowish green. A simple piece of clothing tied together with a cord that hung in front. I wasn't even wearing shorts down below. When had I changed clothes? This is an isolated hospital ward. Where no visitors are allowed. Oh boy. Dude. I wonder if he'll snap out of it or, or what. I don't know. This is kind of weird. Hospitalized patients are divided into different floors by gender, and you cannot go between them. Every nurse in this psychiatry ward is a man. Your hospital room houses only you. There are no windows either. In other words, you have not had contact with a single woman in seven years, including your own family. Do you remember now? Uh, uh, he was lying. He had to be. I hadn't been hospitalized at all. I was living on my own in Shibuya. I was a pretty well-known high-level player in ESO, and I even went to school. Sure, I, I only went in accordance with my minimum attendance chart, but... But that was still two to three times a week. I'd even just had a fairly professional, cordial chat with the nurse at the reception desk. Is this your first time here? Yes, it is. All right, then please fill out this form as you wait. You have to be lying. You have to. Do you truly believe that? As he murmured that, Dr. Takashina scribbled something on the medical form he was holding. I couldn't tell what he was writing. It wasn't Japanese. Was it English? No. German? If so, your mental state must still be abnormal. We'll have to ensure you remain hospitalized here for a while longer. He gave me a single fleeting glance. His eyes were full of pity, even though he'd never looked at me in such a way before. I collapsed to my knees helplessly. Tears poured from my eyes. Oh, I see. It all made sense now. All of my memories up until now had just been delusions. It was me all along. I was the crazy one. What a cruel twist that was. Then again, it wasn't like I cared anymore. Even if they were delusions, they weren't fond memories anyway. And I mean, I could just make new ones, right? This time, a world without scary murders happening around me would be nice. 
I'd have a sociable personality, get good grades, and have some crazy talent. I'd be super popular with the ladies. My friends would all be hotties, as hot as the hottest swimsuit models, and what's more, everyone would love the ever-loving crap out of me. Then, I'd propose that we should all start living under the same roof, and after that, my new life would begin. It wouldn't be easy, and it would have its ups and downs, but it'd be fun. There'd even be a bit of slapstick thrown in there. He's talking like, uh, like a, a like a harem anime or something like that, right? <laughs> I forced myself to laugh. My face twitched. I wanted to die. I abruptly came to my senses, only to find myself sitting on a sofa in the lobby. <laughs> okay, yeah. Wow, yeah, he kind of went insane there. Dang. I, I still I still wonder what the good one would have been. I, I guarantee it. I bet I'm right. If when we go back, because we'll probably have to go back at some point to get other endings, we'll have to like click that one green or something. Watch me be right. Watch me be right, okay? But I had to see what the red one would do. So wow, yeah, he went totally insane. That's that's kind of wild. A nasty sweat covered my entire body. A chill ran down my spine. Unable to grasp what exactly was going on, I frantically looked around the room. Beside me was a hunched-over old lady. Her eyes were covered in wrinkles, so I couldn't tell whether she was asleep or awake. I took a look at the clock above the reception desk, and I saw that I'd been waiting in the lobby for a full hour. Had that all been just a dream? I hadn't slept last night, so had I dozed off while waiting? I gave a deep sigh of relief. It'd been a bad dream. It had been a dream, right? I tried remembering everything that happened up until the day before. Nothing seemed out of place. My memories were continuous and consistent. I'd encountered the demon girl at the scene of the crime, and then I got deceived and subsequently threatened by Yua. Then I'd gone to the hospital to prove that I was of perfectly sound mind. Yup. Everything added up. I wouldn't mind if it all ended up being a delusion, though. That way, creating another new delusional world that I could go nuts in would have been much, much better. The fact that I was even thinking that just went to show how utterly sick I was with everything that had been happening in my life recently. In the end, I found myself waiting for another two hours before my name was finally called. When I entered the examination room, it almost felt like the same events I'd seen in the dream were happening again. Dr. Takashina even appeared almost exactly like he had in the dream. Eh, it was probably just that he'd barely changed since I last saw him four years ago. How can I help you? Dr. Takashina didn't say anything ridiculous like, your memories are delusions this time, but... Um... W well... I'm... Nishijo... Hmm? Ah, yes. Introductions are probably in order. <laughs> My name is Dr. Takashina. It's a pleasure to meet you. He bowed his head cheerfully. I... was lost for words. It's a pleasure to meet you? That was what he'd just said. He'd completely forgotten me. I shouldn't be surprised. It had been four years, after all. But I'd... I'd truly believed that Dr. Takashina, of all people, would remember me. Maybe that was arrogant. 
but I'd hoped for it all the same. So my heart was overwhelmed with loneliness and emptiness when those expectations were smashed to pieces. It felt like my very existence was being denied. So isn't it funny though, right? Isn't it funny that he's kind of treating Dr. Takashina like he's his only friend? You know what I mean? And it's funny because he's like the medical professional. I feel like this is what happens to so many people, right? They like, they hate the world around them, right? For instance, there's like a big epidemic in the world right now where people really love animals, but they despise human beings, right? And like many people say, well, it's because, you know, animals don't betray me and human beings just are sick and twisted and they, you know, they've just had bad experiences with human beings in the past and all this different stuff, right? But, but there's like this big thing where tons of people will stand up for animals. You, you, people even do polls where it's like, if you could save a stranger or an animal, like they're both drowning, which would you save? And people are like, yeah, I'd probably save the dog, you know? It's like they wouldn't, it's really crazy, but, but yet they feel that way and yet they treat their, their, their therapist, if you will, this is almost what Dr. Takashina's kind of like for him. They, well, it actually, it is what it was for him because he went there for the psychiatry help, right? Um, but he treats him like he's his best friend, right? And it just seems backwards to me. It's like the, the place where it's like, where, where it's like, it's very cold and very just about like, like where you, where you really probably like wouldn't truly bond with somebody, right? is is the place where people seem to latch on to the most, you know? But, you know, I, I, I don't have great experiences with hospitals and, and people that work in them. Not to say that, you know, they're all bad or anything like that. That's not what I mean in, in, in the slightest. Um, that we, uh, Me and my family have had tons of bad experiences with doctors and hospitals and all this different stuff, and they usually are just not out for your best interest but your family and friends are. And most people push their family and friends away, but cling to their therapist who really is just there to listen to you talk and then to drug you up in a lot of cases. You know, it's like people probably wouldn't, they, they wouldn't uh, admit that. They'd say, no, I'm going there for help. They, they give me meds when it's only absolutely necessary, but they almost always do though. You know, I, I don't know. It just seems backwards to me. I just, I find that really interesting. I wonder if they're making a statement on that. I doubt it, because that's, I feel like, my, my view on the medical field is quite, I feel f fairly unique, I mean, to some degree. Um, but it's mostly based off of experiences that I've had and seen uh, secondhandedly. So, um, you know, it's just like, I just, it's something I can't really, like, wrap my head around that mentality, but I feel like a lot of people have it, and I just wonder if maybe they're going to get into that. Maybe they won't. Maybe I'm feeding my own kind of opinion into it, but just kind of interesting. Anyway, Dr. Takashina started talking to me while making eye contact, but I averted my gaze. It's written here that you wanted to check whether or not you've been sleepwalking. Yes. Should I take that to mean something happened during your normal sleeping hours? Right. I'd written that on the questionnaire, but it was all meaningless now. He didn't remember me at all. <laughs> Who cares if he doesn't remember? Whether he remembers you or not has nothing to do with anything, does it? Don't you dare go forgetting your mission. Oh, right. I hadn't come here to meet Dr. Takashina. I'd come here to prove that I was a completely healthy and sane human being. <laughs> Our reunion was merely a bonus. Who gives a crap if he'd forgotten me? If Seratan hadn't stepped in and given me that advice, I would have come dangerously close to losing sight of myself. Phew. Uh, um... It is unconsciously doing stuff like going outside and typing s sentences on my PC without r remembering any of it C can can that kind of thing happen oh S someone I know 
pointed it out to me, and I've been so confused. Do you think there's a possibility that this person is merely playing a prank on you? <laughs> Yua's eyes had been serious. It hadn't looked at all like she was messing with me. At the very least, I had no doubt that Yua believed what she said. I'm not... sure. I see. Also, what kind of relationship do you have with this person? A romantic one? I wish, but, uh, unfortunately, no, not anymore. Huh? Where the heck did that come from? And what did it have to do with anything? Was I missing something here? Ah, oh, well, that might not have been a good way to put it. <laughs> I'll rephrase it. Did this person you know actually witness you walking around while unconscious? Oh, so that's what he meant. I shook my head. So that means there's no evidence of it. I once again shook my head. Th they acted... like a detective. Confronting me with evidence... and stuff. Hmm... I see. While we're on the topic, have you ever shown any signs of sleepwalking before now? N no Have you ever experienced waking up in the morning, only to find yourself in a different location than you had gone to sleep in? N no So that would mean that the event this person told you about is the first time you believe you've experienced it, correct? After nodding weakly, I steeled myself and spoke. I, I ha haven't slept. Is that scaring you? If so, I assure you it isn't anything serious. Oh, um, no. I... That's not... That's, that's not what I meant. But I couldn't figure out how to explain it, and it was too late to say it out loud anymore. I was too flustered. I know that feeling. <laughs> I actually know what that feels like, where it's like, you ha you could say it, but you just feel like it'd be awkward to say it now. That's, that's kind of funny. After scribbling something on a medical form, Dr. Takashina swiveled away from me in his chair and leaned forward toward the back of the examination room. Hazuki-kun? A moment, please. Of course, doctor. The young nurse rushed over to him, and Dr. Takashina showed her the form. As he did so, he whispered for her to do something, and she quickly withdrew to the back of the room. What had that been about? The doctor turned back toward my puzzled self. Then, in a gentle voice... He began to explain to me how sleepwalking worked. When a person falls asleep, they first begin non-REM sleep, before eventually progressing to REM sleep. Non-REM sleep is a deeper sleep where the brain hibernates and brain activity ceases. Meanwhile, REM sleep is a kind of sleep where the body is resting, but the brain is active in a state that's fairly close to being awake. Sleepwalking is believed to more easily occur during non-REM sleep. With the brain not performing its usual activities, it's difficult for it to formulate normal responses. It can still respond accurately to a certain degree, however, even allowing actions such as climbing up and down a staircase without a single misstep. One cause of it is when experiencing severe mental stress. It can easily occur then. It's a common symptom in children, but it also often occurs in adults. That should explain it, yes? That's what I meant by it be nothing serious. Okay. But... I hadn't been sleeping. Even though I hadn't been sleeping, I'd still done things I didn't remember. The Times Shogun 
had been posting from room 37 in the chat room should have been when I was busy playing ESO. Could sleepwalking really be possible there? I wanted to ask him that, but he was already moving to a different topic. There are many ways to check whether or not you've been sleepwalking. As for the most quick and easy way, well, we'd have you lie down on this bed right here. <laughs> However, there may be certain conditions that need to be met in order for it to occur. For example, it might not happen if you aren't lying in your own bed. While you may be walking around in an unconscious state, you could be walking around aimlessly. Or you could be driven by something compulsive, leading you to walk around with a series of goals. Moreover, it could also require specific conditions in regards to your mental state. For example, you would be able to relax on your bed at home, but you'd have no way of relaxing here. Well, what do you think? Would you like to try sleeping here regardless? I had nothing to lose, so I didn't see a reason not to try. Then, after I proved I wasn't sleepwalking, I could try asking the real question I had in mind. The nurse from before, Hazuki-san, or something, guided me over to the hospital bed located at the back of the room. As it wasn't a bed meant for sleeping, it was firm and uncomfortable. Then again, considering the sofa I usually slept on, that shouldn't pose any problems for me. I'll come to wake you up in about three hours from now. This nurse was pretty darn cute. As I lied on the bed, I took a quick peek at her face while being careful to avoid eye contact. <laughs> her baby face made her look kind of unreliable, and she even had this almost despondent aura about her. But she was doing her job pretty well. She felt like a heroine right out of a classic idoge. One with kinky hospital sex. <laughs> Gosh darn it. <sighs> I'll make sure to keep a close eye on you, so please relax and have a nice rest, okay? Basically, if symptoms of sleepwalking occurred, like I started wandering around on my own, she'd make sure to take care of me. Well then, good night. After giving a slight smile, the nurse closed the curtain and left the hospital room. Now, surrounded by a pure white curtain, I took a deep breath. All around me, I could hear the voices of doctors examining patients, the sound of nurses running around, and the sound of the door to the examination room opening and closing. Yeah, I doubted I'd be able to relax here. Could I actually fall asleep like this? <laughs> Figuring I had nothing to lose, I closed my eyes. So, interesting. I wonder... So, because he, he can't be here for too long, right? So hopefully this will just be a day event, because he still has to go to school and stuff eventually, right? Hmm. I wonder. I wonder if Nanami will come and check on him and he won't be there and she'll freak out and his parents will come looking for him or something. I wonder. No matter what I did, my mind refused to think of anything other than that corpse that had been massacred and crucified with stakes, as well as the gory pictures Shogun had sent me. So, I forcibly conjured Seratan into my head. Taki, you're amazing for going to the hospital, even though you hate going outside. So, okay. Uh, do I do... I could do a green one, but this is probably not smart, right? Okay, I could do another thing for science, okay? I could do another thing for science. Does every single green one lead to something lewd, right? Or doesn't it? I could... What, watch me pick the one that it does and all the other ones don't. <laughs> 
I could, I could try, or I could just leave it. I could just leave it alone, right? Hmm. I don't know. Which one do I do? Ah, uh, boy. I don't want to click it. I don't. I don't want to. I don't want to deal with that. You know. Let's see what she says. I've been thinking for a while now, but like, you're actually super duper strong, aren't you, Taki? Sarah animatedly moved about in my delusion. Her cute voice chirped for me. I really love how strong you are. Oh, this one's gonna be bad. I can feel it. Also, Taki, you know you don't sleepwalk, right? I watch you every day, so of course I'd know. I'm a gosh darn Taki expert. <laughs> Dude, this one's gonna be, this one's gonna be, <laughs> I, I feel it in my, in my bones. I feel this one. Uh, I could for science. I could, but science screwed me last time, so... Uh, science screwed me last time. Do I do it? No, it's too, it's too obvious, right? Or, or is it because it's obvious that I should? Because the other one wasn't obvious and I wasn't ready for it. This one's not obvious. Or this one is obvious, so, so it wouldn't happen, right? That's how that would work. Ah, dang it. Dang it. Freaking. Bro, oh wait. What if he, what if he, <sighs> I spend so much time wondering what's going to happen that I just don't do anything. But it's because I don't know. Like, I don't know. I don't know what to do here. I don't know. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not clicking it. I'm not clicking it. I'm not going to click this one. You can't let those 3D girls trick you. Besides, you've got me here, righto? Let's spend time in that container house again. Just the two of us, you big dum dum. <laughs> yeah, let's not. Let's not. <laughs> Saratan. You're so cute, Saratan. She really was my ideal waifu. There wasn't a single woman better than her. 3D? The heck was that? Ugh. I want to go home already. I want to go home and have Saraton welcome me back with a smile. I know it's going to be. It's going to be, dude. Do I take the bait? I do, I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. I'm not taking the bait. Wait for me, okay, Saraton? I'll be coming home soon. Yeah, not taking the bait. Not taking the bait. Not taking the bait. Not taking the bait. Not taking it. Nishijo-san? It's time to wake up. Come on, open your eyes. Saratan softly placed her hand on my chest and gently rustled me awake. Ah, uh, now this is the kind of thing I've always dreamt of. Living together with Saratan. I'd have her wake me up every morning wearing nothing but an apron, complete with a wake-up kiss. I bet that's what the delusion would have been, dude. I freaking dodged that bullet, baby. That time, I think I did it. I didn't take the bait. <laughs> Not this guy. Not me. Mm -mm. We stay. We're, we're freaking. We're freaking. We're freaking staying. We're staying. Uh, what's the word? I can't think of the word. We're staying. Uh, we're staying. I can't think of the word. What's the word? We're <laughs> we ain't simping out here is what I'm trying to say. We're, we're out here being Sigma males, brother. <laughs> Gosh, dang it. I freaking dodged that bullet. <laughs> Nishijo-san? 